Enes na N with another video. Now with Anatomy of the Upper Torso. But first, I would like to remember that the links for my Instagram and the Discord server of the channel are available on the video description. This is the part one because we have a lot of things to cover and I prefer to split in different videos. To the part one, our focus will be around three muscles. Pectoralis major, trapezius and the deltoid muscle. But using this commentary as a base, I decided to add one more muscle the sternoclastomastoid as a way to connect the head to the rest of the body. I use the Michael Hampton book as a base. The title is uh, Figure Drawing, Design and Invention. In the book, he explains how to draw anatomy using a step-by-step -step method. The method has four steps. Step 1. Shape. 2. Placement. 3. Gesture. And 4 perspective. Using this logic turns the process more easier because we are not thinking about the final result but to make sure that all the steps are being followed on the correct order. First we will talk about the sternoclastomastoid muscle. This muscle originates from two points. One point in the clavicles and another at the sternum. And the insertion point in a simplified way is the point where we place the ears at the head. The muscle have a different functions, like flex the cervical column, rotate the head, and also elevate the head. To turn the compression easier, I made animations, where I used the logic of thinking in a three-dimensional space, where in the first step I used rectangles or cubes in perspective, as a base, as a way to make sure that my object will be accurate in any perspective. First, we have the clavicle. In a simplified way, we can think about the clavicle as a handle bar. And on the middle of the clavicles, we have the sternum head, represented as a small rectangle. We also need a neck. Like on the first case, we can use a cube as a base to literally start modeling our neck in perspective. We can represent our neck as a cylinder inside our cube in perspective. We also need to draw the head. We can use a cube as our base and the next step is just to literally draw the head. I already made a video talking about the head. I will leave the card here. We can put all together, I'm talking about putting the clavicle, the neck and the head together in the simplified way, using the rectangles and cube in perspective as a way to literally make sure that all will be correct in perspective. Each one of the elements that we have here, the clavicle, the neck and the head, are important to show how the clavicle muscle behaves in perspective. Like I already mentioned, the sternoclastomastoid muscle have two origin points, one at the head of the sternum and another on the clavicle. And we can see here on the animation that this is happening. And we can also see the insertion point using the side view as our base. In a simplified way, the sternoclastomastoid muscle inserts at the ear area. So with that, we are literally able to understand how the sternoclastomastoid muscle behaves in relationship with the other elements. We can also see that the muscle follows the contour of the cylinder of the neck, showing that the cylinder have an impact on the shape and the behavior of the sternoclastomastoid muscle. To turn the comprehension easier, I decided to remove the head from the animation. So now we can see in a clear way uh, the behavior of the sternoclastomastoid muscle in perspective. Later we will talk about this again. Now it's time to go to the next muscle. The pectoralis major muscle. This muscle has three origin parts. A clavicular part, a sternocostal part and a abdominal part. The humerus is the insertion point. The main function of the muscle is the abduction and rotation of the arm. 
in the shoulder joint. Basically, the pectoral is major to possible to rotate our arm and move the arm away from our body. We can simplify the pectoral major shape as a fish without a head. We can see that we have here a square and two triangles. We can also add volume and move the object around the space, showing the perspective of the muscle. Like I made on the previous muscle, we also have animation. To turn the comprehension easier and to show how we can use the theoretical part to do the practical stuff. We can see how the pectoralis measures behaves in perspective in different situations using a simplified version of the muscle. With that, we can talk about the deltoid muscle. The deltoid muscle have three origin parts, a clavicular part, a acromial part, and a scapular part. On the other hand, the humerus is the insertion point. In a simplified way, the function of the deltoid is to manage the way that the arm moves. We can also simplify the deltoid muscle like we did with the pectoral major muscle using orthographic views. We'll use two triangles to represent the front and the side view of the deltoid. And to put it in perspective, we'll use a cube or rectangle in perspective to place the front and the side view so we'll be able to literally build our deltoid in a simplified way. Like previously, we also have animations here to turn the comprehension easier. We are able to see how the deltoid behaves in perspective using as a base the theoretical knowledge that we covered previously. The trapezius muscle will be the last one for this video. In a simplified way, we can say that the trapezius muscle originates from the occipital region because we have a lot of points of origin there that will be unnecessary to cover here because we are only thinking about the drawing stuff, not becoming a uh, doctors. We have three insertion points, a clavicle point, a uh, acromial point and a scapular point. In a simplified way, the trapezius muscle function is to manage the way that the scapula moves. The simplified shape of the trapezius can be a dagger. We can also put it into perspective using a rectangle as our base. Like previously, we also have animations here to show how the trapezius muscle behaves in perspective and in relationship with the other muscles. We also have another animation where I merged all the muscles. Now we are able to see the trapezius muscle, the deltoid muscle and the pectoral major muscle behaving in perspective. Now it's time to cover again the sternoclastomastoid muscle and the way that we can connect the head to the rest of the body. Here we have some examples uh, where I was applying the things that I was talking previously on the video. First I used to draw uh, rectangles and basic things in perspective. So place the rib cage, uh, a cylinder to draw the neck and a cube to draw the head and I start building all the stuff on top of this. After that, I place the clavicle and I also drew the pectoral major muscle and also the deltoid. And this example was a female body. The logic remains the same. We just need to use a different approach to solve the problem. Talking about the female pectoral major muscle, we also need to add the breasts, but I will leave this topic for another video, now we need just focus on the anatomical uh, simplified part. I also have additional examples where I applied the logic that we covered in the video to draw the muscles, but the quality of the recording uh, isn't that good, but we can see here on the background and I will also leave images in a low resolution, but I hope it helped. 
I'm still learning and I'm still struggling with Anhatun, but I think that I literally learned how to draw the sternoclastomastoid, the trapezius muscle, the pectoral major muscle, and the deltoid muscle. I will continue practicing and also see the things that I'm doing wrong and correct to be able to literally level up my skill. I realized that knowing the function, the origin and the insertion point of the muscle is so important because when you are turning or changing the perspective of an object, you will be able to maintain the same and accurate proportions regardless the perspective so it's important to literally study the theoretical and the practical part i advise you to always think in a three-dimensional space not in a flat and 2d way it is basically it for this video i hope it helped consider subscribe to the channel like the video and comment if you play fortnite or any game at the epic store consider using my creator code tag Energy 23 it will help a lot. Thank you. Until the next one. Bye bye.